Okay, so um, percent problems is what we're going to go over next. And remember the proportion that we always start with is percent over 100 equals part over whole. Um, is over of a lot of people say, and that's because the word is generally indicates the part and of indicates the whole. Now, this is proportional reasoning as if we were going to think in terms of dollars is to hours is dollars is to hours or, um, uh, I don't know, whatever you want to say, uh, gallons is to miles is gallons is to miles. But you look at this and it, that gallons and miles, gallons and miles is the same on both sides. This looks a little different. But remember, percent means out of 100. So percent is the part out of 100, 100 being the whole and percent being the part. So it really is the same thing. Um, let's see what you remember. The what and the is, they're connected. So that's like N for the variable because it's the unknown. Six and percent are connected and of and 300 are connected. Fill in, cross multiply. Little stop and start. Go ahead, give it a shot. Okay, so six is the percent, so it goes in the percent place, and the of is the whole, which is 300 in the bottom. I cross multiply, and I get 100n is 1800. Remember, because when you cross multiply, you're doing this guy times this guy, 100n equals this guy times this guy is 1800. You know, common math students call it cross multiply. Um, in technical terms, it's <clears throat> in a proportion, the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. You can use either language, but most people prefer to just say cross multiply. Um, dividing both sides by 100, and I get n is 18. Now, for those with a feel for percents, it makes sense that the answer should be 18, and it can be reasoned out. Because 6%, remember we talked about how the percent symbol reminds you of the 100 because you have the 1 on a diagonal and then the two zeros from 100. Okay, the 6% uh, means 6 out of 100. So with 300 in the problem, what is 6% of 300? There's a 100, a 100, and a 100. And each set of 100, you have a 6, a 6, and a 6. So that's 3 times 6 is 18. So it makes sense if you um, think in terms of um, percents. All right, so now let's try the next one, which is 15% of what number is 6. Remember what's linked together. The 15 and the percent, the of and the what number, that's the variable, and the is and the six. Okay, go ahead. All right, so I set up my proportion. 15 goes in the percent place, the six goes in the part or the is place, and the whole or the of is the n on the bottom. Okay, cross multiplying, and when I do that, I get 15 times n is 15n, six times 100 is 600. Dividing by 15, and I get n is 40. So 15% of 40 is equal to 6. All right? Let's try the last one. What percent of 350 is 70? Where does the variable go? Does it go in the of place, the is place, of being whole and is being part, or does it go in the percent place? Yeah, it definitely goes in the percent place because it says what percent. Go ahead. So n over 100 equals 70 over 350. And then I cross multiply again. So I'm going to do the 350n equals 70,000. Dividing by 350 and I get n is equal to 20. So 70 is 20% of 350. All right, so this is the first level of percent problems. It's the same exact thing. This proportion and filling it in and working it out never really changes. The difference is that in this case, we're being very direct and we're not clouding it up with a bunch of other words. Um, we'll get to those in a minute. But I do want to take a second to talk about something I did not talk about too much before the test. A and not A. That is the question. Some people think Shakespeare actually wrote to be or not to be. He did not. Shakespeare was really a mathematician. He was not a poet, a sonnet writer, or a literary, brilliant literary man. Ha, 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 ha. He was a mathematician. So it really wasn't to be or not to be. It was A and not A. Well, no, obviously, Shakespeare was a brilliant literary author. I really, really loved reading his stuff when I was your age in college. And what am I talking about with A and not A? In terms of percents, the percent of A and the percent of not A always has to add up to 100%. So, for instance... If it was, if the probability of rain is 
50%, then the probability of not raining is also 50%, and 50 and 50 add up to 100. But if the probability that it rained was 10%, then the probability that it would not rain is 90%. Okay? So, in a pack of Skittles, 27% are red. What percentage are not red? Stop and start is in effect. That would be 73%. Because together, 73 and 27 is 100. You can just do 100 minus 27. Kind of like solving an equation. Next up, Fraser scores 43% in the spelling test. What percentage did he get wrong? Well, Fraser needs to do a little extra help here. All right, figure this one out. 57%. Because 43 and 57 add up to 100, and you could just do 100 minus 43 is 57. So that's how we can use that the percent of A plus the percent of not A is up to 100. And that can be a big benefit when you're doing problems like about sales and stuff. Because they'll tell you, well, somebody paid, I don't know, say $120 for something. And that was after there was, say, 25% off. But the 120 doesn't get paired with 25% off. It gets paired with the 75% that you did pay. So sometimes it's important to be able to employ or use in our problem solving that the percent of A and the percent of not A adds up to 100. All right, speaking of which, here are a couple of percent problems. Now, the first one can be a two-step percent problem because you have to not only figure out what the tax is, but then the total cost. So the first part, computing the tax, that's a one-stepper. But when you get to the total cost, that's two steps in that problem. So take the same exact skills you were just using. Don't change anything, except realize that in this word problem, they aren't so direct with what is over of and so on and so forth. In this case, the percent is clearly six. It's next to the six. Okay. Then it says the watch you want to buy is $55. So the question is this. Is the whole cost of the watch $55 or is that part of the cost of the watch? Well, that's the whole cost. So therefore, that would be going the whole place in the bottom right. And what we're looking for is the tax is a part of the price. Go ahead, figure out that one. All right. So a percent over 100 is part of a whole. So the six goes in the percent place, and we said the whole cost of the watch was 55 bucks. Now we get into cross multiply mode. We do the 100 times n, and the six times the 55, and I get 100n equals 330. I divide by 100, and I get n is equal to $3.30. So that's the first part of the problem where it says, how much is the tax? The tax is $3.30. Then the second part, where you add a second step in, is what is the total cost? Excuse me. And the total cost is the original 55, the watch cost, plus the tax. You guys know that. You go to the store, you buy stuff. Tax never decreases the price. You always add on for the tax. So 55 and 330 is 5830. All right. Let's try sunglasses. Try the second problem. Go ahead. Okay. So the first thing you have to do is figure out how much tax you actually paid. It doesn't tell you. It tells you that before the tax, it's 45 bucks, and after the tax, it's 47.25. So you got to subtract the 45 from the 47.25, and that tells you that you paid $2.25 in tax. Now you can put that into the equation. It says what percent, so the end goes in the percent place. Is the tax the part of the cost of the item, or is it the whole cost of the item? It's the part. So that goes in the 225 place, and the whole cost was 45. Once you get to this step, it's just a matter of cross multiplying everything. 45n is 225, dividing by 45, and I get n is equal to 5%. Okay? All right. So, um, one last thing to cover with respect to percents, and that's when the percent of increase and the percent of decrease. This we have not worked with yet this year, okay? So here are three problems, and we're going to do all three of them. They give you the before and the after. So in number four, before the increase or the decrease, you have 110. After, and obviously this is an increase because it's going up, you have 143. And in each of these problems, you want to know what is the percent. Now, 
as you take a look at my box on the right hand side where it summarizes some notes for this it says percent increase and decrease and we're going to change part over whole slightly it's still the part over the whole but the part here is because we want to see what was the percent of increase the part is how much you went up so it's the difference between 143 and 110 in this particular problem you went up 33 and then for the whole it's always out of the original amount and it's really important that you remember the whole is the whole amount you started with okay in this case the original is 110 so this will be our teaching example percent over 100 I want to know what is the percent of increase or decrease so n over 100 is the part is the difference here it is written over here do, 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 do. the part is the difference and the original is the whole so the difference if I simply take 143 minus 110 I get 33 and the whole is the original amount 110 again as we've done with many percent problems at this point in time you just cross multiply 110 times n is 110 n equals 33 times 100 is 3300 I divide by 110 I didn't show that step out but that's what we do we divide by 110 and it works out to 30 and I put the I there to specify that this is an increase so it's a 30 percent increase okay you try the second problem number five go ahead all right so what is the amount of change here well I've gone from 90 to 200 so the change is 110 and the original amount is 90 so what percent and over 100 equals the change is 110 out of 90 again I, I've said it all the time once you fill everything in in the right place it's just a matter of cross multiplying um, 11,000 equals 90 n dividing by 90 and I get 122.22 percent increase I just chose to round off to the nearest hundredth if this was a test or a quiz it would be more specific okay and the little I for increase because clearly you're going up from 90 to 200 but if you look at number six I'm not going up I'm going down so rather than an I I would put a D at the end of the problem go ahead okay so um, what we're going to get here is I want to know what percent so that's n over 100 equals the amount of change if you're going from 260 to 160 the change is 100 out of the original amount which is 260 once these things are filled in business as usual cross multiply 10,000 is 260 n dividing by 260 and I get 38.46 percent decrease that's why the D is there okay so we went we we really kind of introduced two things today about percent and then relied on a former and old friend our old friend is percent over 100 equals part over whole is over of is being part of being whole or indicating it um, that is a rock solid foundational thing for dealing with percent equations and then we dealt with um, the percent of a and the percent of not a always add up to 100 so if the percent of rain was 30 what's the percent of no rain 70 and then we also dealt with this percent of increase or decrease where it's so important to remember that it's difference over the original amount difference over the original amount not the after the original All right uh, we'll put this video up and then we've got one more video to do for today it's a video where oh you know what no we've got two more percent problems to do okay so let's have you start the first one we'll go over these this one then we'll go over one more then we'll get into our last video of the day all right so um it says the state tax is eight percent so that tells me right away it goes in the hundred place and then the question you need to ask yourself and it's really 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 simple is that 99.50 the whole cost of the mp3 player or is it something that's a part of the cost clearly it's the whole cost so the 99.50 goes in the bottom i cross multiply i get 100 n is equal to 796 so that means when i divide by 100 that is a seven dollar and 90 cents discount 
Why did I write discount? It's not a discount. That's what the tax is. The tax is $7.96. No discount there. You add that tax back in, baby. $107.46. That's what happens when you make these videos late at night. Discount is the wrong word. $7.96 tax. Okay. You try the next one. Oh, and the total cost, we just said you added up $107.46. You do the next one. Before tax, the sofa costs $6.50. After it costs $6.76. What's the tax rate? Go ahead. All right. So what is the tax? So the end goes in the 100 place. Now, I have to figure out how much the price went up. And if it went from 650 to 676, I wrote it in parentheses here, 26 is the amount of money it went up. 26 bucks out of the original cost, always the original cost. The original cost is 650. Cross multiplying, I get 650n equals 2600. Dividing by 650 and I get n is equal to a 4% Again, I wrote the word discount. I don't understand. You know what? I probably had a previous slide that used the discount, and I just forgot to take the word off. So 4% tax, okay? It doesn't ask what the new price is, so I didn't bother answering that. So that's the end of all of our percent problems for the day.